Hello, everybody. Well, uh, this is uh, a trial that we did for almost two years on uh, our commercial products. So my first word is that this is not a commercial um, event to promote the product. Okay, this is the the work of uh, the company to do it. I'm just presenting you some of the results because I want to discuss with you uh, the way we did and maybe other products could in the same way have similar similar results. I come from Greece and this is the, the institute when, uh, where we run the research. Why we start thinking about it is because since 2004 when we encounter problems that we thought that is because of uh, new Nozema, of course, in other parts of the world, uh, they, they find out that Nozema Serana was uh, affecting our colonies, and we had um, a different way of, uh, um, or we should have a different way of dealing with this because we had different um, response from, the, from our colonies. And um, publications on um, the effect of Nozema or um, uh, the synergistic uh, effect of Nozema Plus, other things like iridovirus, for example, or um, pesticides that we listen a lot, uh, they are coming and increasing uh, every day. Of course, it's known to everybody that uh, since we had Nozema Serana coming, uh, we noticed that they are not. Uh, where is the point? That uh, this uh, seasonal occasion of Nozema it uh, disappeared, and now when we have Nozema, we can have it in all year round. And because the problem, it seems that it's quite um, obvious and quite intense in South European countries. Maybe temperature can help. Um, then at, uh, this is our own work. Um, in collaboration, published in 2007, but uh, we had problems since 2004. And at five then, we took the first uh, samples and we realized that it was Nozema Serana and not Nozema Ibis anymore. 2011 was the second one. Um, we couldn't really pr prove that all the colony losses that we had and all the problems that we had were, of course, due to Nozema. But uh, quite a lot of uh, the cases that we had with losses, they had, you see the yes, 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 you can see that they had quite high nozema uh, infestation. And uh, before 2004, we could use fumagillin. After 2004, no fumagillin anymore. Well, I'm in favor of that, but it's not good for the beekeeper because when the, you or they are losing their stock, it's really very frustrating. So we tried uh, uh, thinking of what could be alternative solutions of helping, um, probably helping uh, uh, the ability of, of uh, the bee uh, to uh, react better to the spore accumulation, like you can see it here in the garden, or not to have these damages in the epithelium of the gut. And then, um, well, I'll come back to this. Uh, probably some of you, you are uh, already um, heard about a kind of um, a big collaboration work that we did through the Colos Network. And through that uh, research, we were monitor monitoring colonies and their population development through the year. So here you can see autumn, spring, and uh, summer. It's just only an example, but it was very obvious from this research and that helped us to, to go down to the research for the Nuzema, that uh, the population in the autumn, just before the bees going into the winter, and of course in the spring after the winter, which is very well known to the beekeepers, it's not something which is completely um, uh, new, it's uh, very important. So what we want is a kind of, uh, let's say, um, medicament <coughs> or a kind of a substance that can help the bees to get into the winter as healthy as possible and get out of spring as healthy as, as possible. So you have nozema infestation, you have colony weakening and colony collapse. Maybe nozema is the reason why the, po the colonies are collapsing. Maybe it's not the factor, but it's not the time to question about that.
So Hyperlite, we found it in the market. It was already in the market when I found it. And after some of the friend beekeepers said, well, oh, it's very effective. At least we didn't lose our colonies. It helped them to survive. We, th we thought that we can, we can use it. Questioning through the company, we wanted to know what is in there. They told us that it's uh, microalgae from, from the sea. So there are extracts from different species of uh, seaweeds that they have been routinely used in animal feeds, as you can, you can read. And uh, they are uh, ingredients that they are generally regarded as safe. From this point of view, we thought, okay, if it could be, it could be effective, it could be a kind of a biological um, control. Uh, as I said, the idea was of uh, putting the bees for overwintering in a healthy in a healthy gut. That means maybe we could help through the food, and we try giving it as um, in a syrup. You, you can see the control colonies. That oh sorry. You can see the control. Why I cannot? Yeah. Uh, the control group, there were 10 <laughs> colonies, the first here, and uh, positive control fed with fumagillin. And then the first treated group, we gave hive alive in syrup for two weeks before the winter. And uh, then during the winter, they had only just a control, uh, a candy, nothing special on that one. The second treatment group uh, had the candy, uh, the hive alive in the candy. And the third one, there was a third one, that we trickled between the frames and uh, then uh, we gave it also in the country. And from what you can see, uh, we monitored the population development of the colonies plus the Nozema infestation before and uh, a few months uh, after. I present here only two of the measurements, but we've got two, uh, three or four every time. From what you can see, during the first year, with the way we uh, administered it, we didn't have any, anything uh, special on the bee population. We were measuring the number of the bees, the way we did it through the Coloss experiment. And then if you go down to uh, the Nozema infestation, <coughs> measuring the number of spores, you see that there is a trend here when hive alive was given as a syrup before the winter, but that was not significantly different though. Then we thought, okay, let's use the same colonies. The same colonies, but merge the groups. So the two control groups, the second year was one. And the two treatment groups from the previous year, the second year of the same colonies, we continue. But the way we administered it was um, a bit different. We gave it, we gave the, these um, zaccharides to uh, the syrup for two weeks just before the winter, but in a very thick syrup, so they could consume a little bit, but a lot of it will, could be stored for be used later on. Then during the winter, nothing. They were just all their own honey or some kind to make sure that they could survive the winter. And then in spring, for stimulation, again for two weeks only, but in a diluted kind of syrup. Two parts of water, only one part of, uh, of sugar. It's like we are stimulating our colonies in the beginning of the spring. This way, we thought that maybe they can get into the winter having something good material, let's say, to help the good bacteria in, uh, during the winter, and then they can come out healthier in, in spring. And if we can help them more, they can build up better and let's see what's happened. And from what you can see is that for the adult population, that's the control group, and that's high value group. So here we have 20 colonies, and here we have 20 colonies. So it's in, it was in November 2013, and then in May 2014. And you can see that there is a big significant difference. That means that our treated colonies uh, was uh, were helped to develop a little bit better. And then if you go down, uh, if you go to see the Nozema spores um, infestation, you see that on the opposite side now, you have um, a lower infestation of Nozema a couple of months later after this double treatment. 
Also, four, control of, uh, four colonies of our control group died, but we didn't lost any of the colonies of the uh, Jesuit group. And then if you see the whole uh, series of the colony development since the beginning, uh, you can see the difference that it was not obvious, sorry, that it was not obvious uh, in the beginning. Okay, the first, uh, the first year from November to um, spring, the next spring, and then you go to the second year, where on the same colonies it seems that probably we were trying, we were managing to keep a kind of hygienic um, condition or a better hygienic uh, condition. So that's um, the actual number of the adult population, and that's the percentages of um, the differences. And the same uh, on Nozema from the opposite, uh, in the opposite direction. Nozema was not different between uh, the groups in the first uh, year, but then you had uh, a significant uh, difference of something about 50% during the second year. And this is really, really good. You cannot control it completely, you cannot kill the spores, it's not um, antibiotic, it doesn't, well, doesn't have the bees. Um, uh, I was told, I did not check, that it doesn't stay in the honey. The way we did it, it was in a way that after, in, in autumn, we, uh, after the harvesting and in spring early enough, but only for two weeks, so it was consumed very quickly because the colonies were building up, so there's nothing left uh, afterwards. Uh, at the same time, in previous years, we tried to different different types of um, pollen of sorry plant extracts in order to stimulate the colony spring and autumn and uh, this way, hoping that nozema levels could go down and keep our bees a bit, little bit more uh, healthy. And we are in an area with a lot of pine trees and honeydew production, and it's really uh, an area that we. It was considered like um, a native indigenous um, uh, an area, an area that Nozema can build up uh, a lot, even with the the new uh, the new uh, microsporidia. Mm -hmm. But we didn't see any difference on on the other products. However, now we are working with um, aloe vera, in and we will start uh, the more precise way before the winter and after the winter to see, the same way like Haiva, like to see if we have uh, better results um, there. The colonies were treated with Haiva alive as part of the normal beekeeping practice. So after the harvest, we took the honey for selling, because it has better price than the sugar, and we give a thick sugar solution for them to, to, to have. It was fed uh, in, uh, in syrup, as I said, before and after the winter to stimulate the population. The, um, the scope, the, the aim was to keep healthier colonies during the winter and potentially this could build up during the, the spring and uh, summer. And as long as it's not an antibiotic, you can use it as, as a, not as a medicament, but as a, a food uh, supplement. and uh, it, the same extracts have been used in other um, uh, foods for other animals. However, we don't really know exactly how it works because we didn't have the time to go down to see what's happening with the gut bacteria. This is something that I think it's lacking from the, from the work, but it's in our minds. Uh, hopefully, we will uh, do it. But before I leave you for us, I might have one more minute, right? Sure. Um, I would like to introduce you something else. Um, this is uh, Apimodia's working group number nine. <laughs> we were talking before about working groups of Apimodia. And in this working group, Adverse Effects of Agrochemicals and Bee Medicines on Bees, we have launched an uh, online survey for toxicity events. It's not an uh, agrochemical session, but I just take the opportunity. So uh, we have printed out this survey and we have a very beautiful small mini nook just before um, the door out. Finally, I would like to thank you, the survey, I would like to thank you, leave you with this 
Thank you. It just shows you how sensitive our bees are to everything that comes into the uh, contact with the antenna. Thank you very much.